Amen. So um, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer first, mga kapatid. Let's ask God to, to bless this um, Bible study that we have. And um, may the Lord will help us today now. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, Lord, for what you have done for us today. Thank you for the opportunity that you have provided for us. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for showing us your truth. Thank you for giving us your word. Lord, we commit to you our broadcast this morning. I was Bible study this morning. May you help us, Lord. We acknowledge, Lord, that apart from your help, we could not do this. So please, Lord, uh, we come to you uh, with an acknowledgement of ourselves that we are frail, we are weak. Please help your servant now, and Lord, and please help your people, especially in understanding. And bless your word, Lord, that it may be clear and we will obey it. Uh, give us a believing heart, Lord. Help us to deal with our unbelief. And salamat po sa pag-usapan namin today and help us to realize the importance of this, Lord. And may these things namin matutunan, Lord, will be used for your honor and glory and for our walk with you and relationship with you. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, praise the Lord. Uh, uh, meron po tayong mga greetings po dito. Sabi po ni Sister Kath. Amen. Have a blessed Friday, preacher, and to everyone. Amen. And ganun din sa iyo, Sister Kath. Thank you for joining us every morning dito po sa ating broadcast. Amen. Sabi ni Brother Mike and Brother Joshua Vargas. Sabi niya, good morning po, evangelist, at sa mga brethren po. Good morning. Amen. There's the greeting there. We'll see dito po sa ating, ano, kung meron po. Okay, sige. Uh, but praise the Lord sa um, kabutihan po ng Panginoon. Amen. And uh, we'll be talking this morning a little bit, ano po mga kapatid, pagpapatuloy po natin yung atin pong uh, na, kung saan tayo natapos yung attack the message. But I hope you are preparing now since uh, we have this, ano, let me play this one song po muna mga kapatid from from um from West Coast Baptist College and we'll go on after the song we'll go on ahead with our bible study and the title of the song is stand still these are about fightings po mga kapatid and um just stand still and let god move amen and let me play this song from the West Coast Baptist College just an encouragement for all of us amen just hold on a little longer, just a little bit. The Father has a plan, though it's hard to see it now. You feel you're walking all alone, but He is there, no doubt. When the storm around you rages, and you're tossed to and fro, when you're faced with life's decisions and not sure which way to go, stand still and let God move. Standing still is hard to do. When you feel you have reached the end, He'll make a way for you. Stand And the walls are closing in When the tide is swiftly rising And you wonder where he's been Friend, there's never been a moment When his arms were reaching out You can rest assured and be secure God is moving right now Sister Standing still is hard to do 
that's the truth there, mga kapatid. Amen. We don't have, sometimes we don't have to move or do anything. Just, just let God move. Amen. And um, sometimes God could not move and could not help us because we try to, to act as, Lord, kaya ko to. Ko nang bahala dito. Amen. At the end of the day, hindi din pala natin kaya. Then we resort to God. Then finally realize, amen. Sana dati pa na lang, dati ko na lang, dati na lang ako nag-give up at binigay ko na lang sa Panginoon. Amen. And uh, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 10 now. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. We are still on our the battlefield of the mind. But let me read our text this morning. And in verse number, uh, verse number 2. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some. Okay. Sabi po dito, that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Okay? Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. We already talk about the nature of our warfare. Amen. Though we are in this physical life, but our warfare, amen, our warfare is not after the flesh. So that's the nature of our warfare. So please quit of other fight, okay? You are, most of us are picking with, with a wrong fight. At wala, bitawan mo na yun. You are wasting your time. You are fighting with your brother. You're fighting with the family member. You're fighting against flesh and blood. Bitawan mo na yun. You're just wasting your time. That's not your fight. You're, you're in a wrong arena. You're picking a wrong fight. Amen. At the end, mapapagod ka lang for nothing. Walang victory dun. Wala kang nakukuha. But it even affected your Christian life. It derailed you. Na, pa, na, na derail ka lang sa ibang focus po mga kapatid. Pag ganun ang ginagawa natin. Nasasaktan lang tayo. Nag-aaksaya lang tayo ng resources natin. Nag-aaksaya lang tayo ng emotions natin, strength natin, and we are picking a wrong fight. Let's fight, mga kabadet. Amen. Let's have that Let's have that fight, a right fight. Let's fight the good fight of faith. It's about the fight of faith. It's not about the fight after the flesh. Amen. It's the fight of faith. Amen. Uh, na, nakakapagod din na nakaka-stress, nakaka-distress, at ang nagpapastress natin, those things which are the things that we are not called to do, and we're wasting our time, we're wasting God's resources, mga kapatid. So, though we walk after the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Amen. We do not war after the flesh. And please understand that. And let that sink. Alam naman natin na ating kaaway ay spiritual. Pero hindi pa rin natin nare-record. Sometimes we still pick on those fights. Which, uh, kahit ano, sometimes natitemp pa rin tayo. Inaaway pa rin natin yung mga kapatid natin. Nag nagkakaroon pa rin tayo ng bad relationship sa kanila. Amen. We, we need to record mga kapatid. Amen. And uh, ang sayang, ang dami nating na, sayang na oras, nakaabante ng ating kaaway. Tayo dito, we are fighting a wrong fight. At pansamantala, at ang ating kaaway ay nag, nagkaroon ng advancement, nag-take advantage sa ating kapabayaan or sa ating ignorance. Okay? So, this is a fight of faith. This is not a fist fight with the devil. Amen. This is a fight of faith. This is about battle for the truth. It's a battle for the truth. And the mind, mga kapatid, is the avenue where the truth can be entertained. Hello. It is a it's a it is the field where it could receive where the reception of the truth. Yung mind po natin mga kapatid. That's why it is Satan is so interested with that mind. That's why ang target niya palagi mga kapatid is to corrupt that mind. Amen. Do you remember that as as the serpent beguiled Eve, so your minds will also be corrupted. Amen. Will be corrupted also from the simplicity of Christ. Do you see that? The devil is interested in that mind because he wants to remove that truth and he wants to put something in that mind. 
And this is what we're talking about. We're, this, this battlefield of the mind that we're talking about, we're not talking about mystical fighting that we're, uh, we're casting devils, we're, we're trying to declare war. Against. No, no, we're, we're fighting against the wiles of the devil that we may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. Ano yung wiles, mga kapatid? We, we, we learn about that already, that those are cleverly tricks ng jablo to deceive. These are the schemes of the devil to deceive someone. Amen. To bring someone into bondage. It's a system. Amen. It's a body of ano po, lies, mga kapatid, na i-employ niya sa mga believers para ma-deceive ang mga mananampalataya. And we're fighting against lies. That's why this is a battle for the truth, battle for the territory of our mind. Who will take that territory, whether the truth or lies, mga kapatid? So we, we should be busy. That's why we keep preaching. The, and, and in this preaching, mga kapatid, I'm trying to combat, amen, the wiles of the devil. In this teaching, in this, in this preaching that we have, we're trying to, to counter, amen, to counter attack. Mga kapatid, to counter attack sa kanyang diniploy na mga, mga kasinungalingan na nagkukontrol po sa atin at di, nandito na po nagiging stronghold ng atin pong mind. This is what we call the battlefield of the mind. And by and by, we will you'll understand later on. But what I'm saying is that's the nature of our warfare. That's the fight of faith. Amen. That's a battle for the truth. Amen. Against the lies of the devil, the wiles of the devil, the, the subtlety of the devil, the trickery of the devil. Amen. The beguilement of the devil. And sabi dito sa verse number four, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. If the nature of our warfare, amen, if the nature of our warfare is not after the flesh, Therefore, the nature also of our weaponry is not carnal. Amen. The nature of our warfare and weaponry is not carnal. So, mga kapatid, maybe possible na alam natin, pwede natin accurately ma-identify ang enemy natin, na ang jablo, pero sometimes, because of our ignorance, we will fight him bringing a wrong a wrong weapon, an effective, an effective weapon. Yun po problema. That's why as you are engaged in this war, you are already enlisted in this war. Whether you like it or not, you are already enlisted in this war. The moment you've got saved, you're engaged in this war and the devil is there to hunt you. Amen. And sometimes when we counterattack, with the devil, we use some tools and some weaponry that are not effective because maybe of our ignorance. That's the point why we are learning this morning, mga kapatid. Okay? So we need to understand also the nature of our weaponry and how it is designed to function. What are these weapons that could withstand against the wiles of the devil? Amen. We need an armor. That could withstand against the wiles of the devil. That's why we're learning about we're learning about the armor of God. Amen. We're learning about that that armor of God, po mga kapatid. So sabi dito, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I'll be dealing on that strongholds. We have what is this fighting about? This is pulling down. Amen against stronghold and there are already fortress in our mind that the enemy have built that the enemy have established okay there's already that stronghold na ang hirap gibain pero hindi imposible magigiba pa rin if we if we use the right weapon but if we use a wrong weapon Mahirap po yung gibain. Talagang yung religion na nasa isipan natin talagang sometimes it blinds us. It blinds us mga kapatid. That's the blinding of the devil. 
na ginagamit na pag every time pag may preaching, may auto defense na po siya. Ah! May mga palusot na siya. That's why the truth could not penetrate. But if we use the right weapon, mga kapatid, just use the right weapon, it can, it can, amen, penetrate. Doon po, doon po sa stronghold na yon. And isa-isahin po natin pag-usapan. This fight is about pulling down. Amen. Of stronghold. This fight is about, this battle is about casting down imaginations. It's not about, it's not about casting the devils, but there are imaginations in the mind. There are thoughts. Amen. Random thoughts. There are systematic thoughts that we have in the mind that needs to be replaced, needs to be pulled down, needs to be cast down. Mga kapatid, imaginations. Those are strongholds of system, stronghold of belief. Those are strongholds of, ano po mga kapatid, of religion. Those are strongholds of, napakadami po mga kapatid, yung mga strongholds po na yun. And we are fighting, and the Bible says, pull down. And we are we have also random thoughts, evil thoughts that will pop up in our mind, sensual thoughts that will pop up in our minds, and these are what imaginations. Amen. There are mga projected things and in our mind, mga kapatid, that could affect us, and that's the nature of our warfare. It is about fighting, amen, to pull down the strongholds. It's about the fight of casting down imaginations, mga kapatid. And what else, mga kapatid? And every high thing that exalted itself, it is fighting against high thing. What is a high thing, mga kapatid? That exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Amen. Ito yung mga matataas kuno na mga bagay that was designed to go against the knowledge of God. Oh, I'm so excited pagdating po dyan. But let's take this low. We'll go there. But I'm giving you the overview of the battle. We're fighting against hiding. Ano kaya yung hiding na yon, mga kapatid? Any idea, hiding is any idea or any knowledge, mga kapatid, that try to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. I'll give you one hiding. Science. Okay, that is a body of knowledge that they try to ex exalt against the knowledge of God or above the knowledge of God. And they try to refute what the Bible says. Philosophy. Amen. Amen. And many, many more, mga kapatid, will, will go to that. And what else, mga kapatid? And bringing into captivity. This is about capturing. Amen. Bringing into captivity every thought. This is about capturing. Amen. To captive, to capture, mga kapatid, every thought. That's the fight we're, we're engaged with. Amen. Contrary to, to many preachings and sermons and Bible studies about battle, amen, field or battle of the mind or whatever, spiritual warfare. And they're, they think that they're contending with the devil face to face. No, we're talking about the schemes of the devils, the wiles of the devil that he employed, that he implanted in our mind, mga kapatid, that, that caused us to struggle, that caused us to be hindered, mga kapatid, to know more God and to serve God. And, 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 but we need to counter these things. This will cause us troubles oftentimes. And we have some thoughts in the mind that we need to capture. We need to be subdued, to be under obedience, okay? To be, to bow down to the obedience of Christ. That's the thing that, that we are, we're looking at, mga kapatid, okay? So, so far, uh, what we have seen po, mga kapatid, is we already talked about the nature of our warfare, the nature of, ano po, of our weaponry, at ano po yung ating kaaway. So these are, we're fighting against the wiles of the devil. Okay? That's why meron pong pang-counter na armor dyan, right piece of armor, and that is what we called po mga kapatid, ano po yung armor na yun? The whole armor of God. We are to put on the whole armor of God. If you have read Ephesians 6.11, where it says, put on the whole armor of God, 
that we may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. That we may be able to stand against the wild devil. So the, there's only one armor, mga kapatid, or, or a, a kind of armor that would with, withstand or stand against the wiles of the devil, against this, mga kapatid. And what are these? These are the armor of God. Makikita po natin. And you know what a while is? I've been, I've been explaining what a while, which is, pinakita po natin doon, no? Uh, by the way, kasi ang konsepto natin sometimes ay carnal, eh, no? When we, when we have a fight with the devil, we are not fighting na para kang si San Goku na mag, na you're fighting with the demonic affairs dyan na, ng kanyang kapangyarihan, pinapakita mo din yun, ang kanyang power, ang yung power doon. No, that's not, hindi po ganun ang, ang fight na sinasabi po natin mga kapatid. Okay? It's, ang jablo, may i-deploy po siya, i-counter attack po natin, yun yung mga lies niya. At ang ating panlaban doon ay ang truth, mga kapatid. Ang truth. So, umuulan po dito, naririg, I hope, uh, okay lang dyan sa inyo, hindi ko maririnig ang sarili ko. Lakas po ng ulan ngayon. But praise God sa ulan, we need that. We need the rain po, mga kapatid. Amen. So, may mga bewile, uh, may mga beguiling or bewitching ang jablo at na ano pang purpose po ng mga mga ano po na yon pag bewitch niya at ang mga wiles ng devil po mga kabatid they are designed to dislodge us kaya nga sabi doon that he may be able to stand against okay when you when you are standing that is to to have a fixed position po mga kabatid rooted and to be grounded And we have an armor para hindi to yung mamove. So on the other hand, these wiles of the devils, devil and the weaponry of the devil na ginagamit, which are lies, mga kapatid, and deception po, mga kapatid, they are designed to dislodge us. They are designed to derail us. They are designed to knock us off from our fixed position po, mga kapatid, and cause us not to hold the line. Pag once na ma-move na tayo, mga kapatid, at knock us down, mga kapatid, amen, we could not anymore hold the line. Then the flood of attack, he will now start to have the medieval concept of war. He will now start to siege in your mind. He will now start to take over in your mind. And we become spoiled. We become a spoil, remember? The spoils of war. Beware lest any man spoil you. The goal of the devil is to spoil you, to capture you, to get you. Amen. Then we will become useless. Our Pastor Ben used a, used a ano po mga kapatid, one time I think uh, that was last last Sunday, he used the term para maging inutil. Ang Kristiyano ay maging inutil. Useless. He could not move. Amen. Hindi na magamit sa Panginoon. Because he's been sieged by the devil. His mind is now, amen, filled with strongholds that he could not even perceive, amen. He could not even receive the truth so easily. But if we use the right weapon, there is something that could counter that and that could penetrate us, mga kapatid. And this is what we, we mean, mga kapatid, when, when we talk about the battlefield of the mind. And the only way to withstand, mga kapatid, according to Ephesians 6.13, to withstand against, mga kapatid, these things is, the only way to withstand is to take up the whole armor of God. To take up the whole armor of God. We'll, we'll be going to piece by piece the whole armor of God po, mga kapatid. Lahat po nang yan. But just remember, we learned this, that Satan has this policy of evil. He has this policy of evil or plan of evil against the people of God, against the body of Christ. He has a plan, and strategically, Satan's plan calls for three, amen, systematic major line of attacks. Ano po yung major line of attack niya? Which is, again, this attack is to design, to dislodge you, to destroy you, to make you impotent, to make you helpless, amen, or hopeless, to make you unusable po mga kapatid. Ineffective. This is the goal po mga kapatid. Uh, to dislodge you from that fixed position and cause them to withstand, not to withstand. Amen. 
and hold the line. And the phase one of attack is which we learned, mga kapatid. Attack the message. Attack the message. And the second phase of attack ng devil is to attack the messenger. And the third phase of attack is to discredit the messenger. So ngayon, we are on the attack of the message. That's what we discussed last week po mga kapatid. And I'd like you to remember again that success of any of these phases, mga kapatid, Satan gives the opportunity to carry out a slander also in the heavenly places and to make you useless, amen, and to be captive din sa kanya po, mga kapatid. If this phase one will not attack, I will not, I mean, accomplish or successful po, mga kapatid, he will move on to phase two, amen. If he will be successful, no need for phase three. But what we say, what we mean, mga kapatid, we have an enemy that is so determined. An enemy that is so determined to get you. Determined to destroy us, po mga kapatid. And let's not rest because that's the enemy that we have. And we, we look at, mga kapatid, on this attack, the message. Amen. So let me share my slides for, so that we could have a quick review, po mga kapatid. Sa natutunan din po natin. Okay? Dito po tayo sa part po ng ano po mga kapatid. Uh, just wait ha. Pinahanap ko yung... Oh, dito sa isang phase 1 attack. Let me... Let me... Let me share my screen sa inyo po mga kapatid. Uh, para makita po natin. And... Uh, Okay, we, we talk about this already, this phase one of attack po mga kapatid. Okay, and uh, it is the attack the message and I'd like you to observe the winds of contrary doctrine and this attack upon the message of God's grace and the believer's uh, proper edification come in the form of ano po, sige, uh, atras tayo ng kaunti pala. Oops. Okay. So, this, this mga kapatid, this attack that seeing that the war Satan has waged in this dispensation is founded, we already discussed that, is founded upon his hatred. Okay, ano pong, ano pong ug, ugat nito mga kapatid? Upon his hatred. For the revelation of the mystery. And I explain it over and over again. Why the devil hates the mystery. And it is only natural that his first line of attack would be directed against the message itself. It's natural. So that's why atakihin po niyang minsahe na ito. And he will see to it. Amen. Na hindi po ito mapakinggan. He will see to it na hindi niya ito mapangaral. Mga kapatid. At maintindihan ng, ng mga Kristiyano, yan po ang ginagawa po ng Jablo. It is only natural that his first line of attack would be directed against the message itself because he hates it, mga kapatid. He hates it to the bone because it exposes it by attacking or obscuring it or hiding it or even denying it by the means of misleading and unsound teaching from God's word. Satan is able, that's the goal. Why he needs to do this? Because Satan is able to keep the Christian ignorant or mistake about the very thing they need to know. Amen. That is very true now. Napakadaming Kristiyano mga kapatid na, na ano po mga kapatid na instead uh, ito yung matutunan nila. Iba ang nakuha nila. Perverted na mga katotohanan ang nakuha po nila mga kapatid. Hindi yung dapat na pinapangaral po nila at natutunan nila. Ano ano pong ano pong point? Because the devil is successful in this area. Mga kapatid, in blinding the minds of them which believe now. So he will employ he will employ winds of contrary doctrine. You see? It's not about the devil will take or touch your body or whatever. No, no, that's not the fight that we live in. Tapos na po 'yun. And the Lord will not allow at that merry moment kasi wala nang signs, wonders and miracles. Those are mga sign gifts. We're not fighting of casting the devils. We're fighting against the doctrines of the devil. 
Again, this is a good fight of faith. This is a fight of faith. Fight for the truth, mga kapatid. And it is natural that the devil will employ, amen, will send his winds of contrary doctrine. And if you read Ephesians chapter number 4, verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children, those to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine and, uh, and cunning craftiness by the slight of men, amen, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So yun po yung kalaban po natin mga kapatid. An attack of that upon the message of God's grace and the believer's proper edification come in the form of contrary doctrine. And that's why he gave us man gifts. He gave us pastors. He gave us evangelists. He gave us teachers in the body of Christ that we henceforth be no more children. But the devil will get you. He would, he would like you to stay ignorant po mga kapatid. Bakit kung ang bata po mga kapatid, you will be toast to and fro. Wala kang fixed position. Matoast to and fro ka po mga kapatid. At gumamit ang Bible ng wind of doctrines. Ng analogy ng wind of doctrine. Amen. That believers are toast about to an open sea and beguiled into believing something else from the Bible to be God's program and order today. Now, ma you, you look, at, you, you consider, my illustration last week was, you consider a boat or a ship that is in the midst of the sea that is not anchored. Okay, not anchored. At mga kapatid, ang mangyari, if it's not anchored, pag may wind, palutang-lutang lang siya. So ano ang mapektuhan? Yung destination ng ship na yon, yung kanya pong stability, and possibly po mga kapatid, shipwreck. Possibly for a shipwreck. At ang paggagamit po doon, mga kapatid, that the believer I liken into just like in the sea, when there is this wind of doctrine, mga kapatid, will go to him, will blow to him, he will just pawindang-windang, or finally, they will shipwreck. And we see that in the Bible, that there are people who are shipwrecked in the faith. And sometimes, we will experience that, mga kapatid, sa atin. And let's be very careful, mga kapatid. Dahil totoo po ito, mga kapatid. Amen. Kaya, ito mga doctrines of men, doctrines of the Pharisees, lahat po ng mga doktrina po na yun, mga kapatid, nakasulat po yun sa Bible. Okay? Nakasulat po yun sa Bible at yun po yung mga ipapadala po ng jablo upang uhulihin tayo. Amen. Upang i-deceive po tayo, mga kapatid. Let's be very careful. So, Satan will attack through beguilement. Remember, mga kapatid. Amen. Our enemy is a serpent. And serpent, according to the Bible, is more subtle than every beast of the sea. I, oh, oh, every beast of the field. Okay? So the Bible says, be ye wise as serpent. So I'm giving you the nature of a serpent. The serpent is so wise. Amen. He is so strategic in his attack. He is so subtle in his attack. And he will use that beguilement, that deception, mga kabatid. This beguiling is going to come through in a form of enticing words. Amen. That sounds good. And may have some truth in them. Remember Colossians 2.4? Beware lest any man, amen, entice you. Or beware lest any man beguile you with enticing words. So that beguiling will come through an enticing words. Amen. And an enticing words that Paul warns about in verse 4 is designed to spoil. Amen. It spoil the believer. In Colossians 2.8, ito mga enticing words na ito would come in a form of philosophy. Amen. At lahat po ng ito po mga kabatid. So, also Paul warns us against the beguiling nature of those who would claim some extra biblical messages. Amen. From God or from angels. Do you remember those people? In Colossians chapter number 2 po mga kabatid, where it tells us mga kabatid that sabi po doon that uh, uh, may mga tao nag-entertain, intruding, intruding about things that which they have not seen. 
but vainly pop up in their fleshly mind. Amen. Vainly pop up in their fleshly mind. Ang sabi nila, nakarinig daw sila ng boses, ng Diyos. Kinausap daw sila ng Diyos. Nagpakita daw sa kanilang angel. Pero hindi naman yung totoo. It's just gawa-gawa nila. Imahinasyon nila. That's why we're fighting against imaginations. Mga kabatid, gawa-gawa nila. Sabi nila, nakita daw nila. Pero it's just vainly pop up in their fleshly mind. Amen. Tapos magtayo ng relihiyon. Oh, I spent a whole, a whole time, hours, mga kapatid, to discuss about that last week. Amen. Mahaba-haba yung na-discuss natin yan last week. And I don't have to go over. But these are extra-biblical revelation. So the four satanic issues that we talked about last time po, mga kapatid, what are those four satanic issues? Number one po, mga kapatid, okay? Again, they are... They serve to obscure the truth. That's the point. Or to deny the truth. Ito yung padala ng jablo upang ma-deprive ka sa katotohanan so that you will become ignorant to the truth, mga kapatid. And these four satanic issues had been successfully, amen, dwelling in the minds and in the heart of many believers right now and many sinners right now. That's why the, the light of the glorious gospel, mga kapatid, ay talagang in-stop nila. Amen. Ito yung blindness ng jablo. Amen. These are the form of blinding the devil in the minds of them which believe not. Amen. Why? Lest the light of the glorious gospel would shine in their hearts. So this is the, the defense of the devil so that the light of the glorious gospel would not shine unto them. And this comes into four philosophy and vain deceit. We, I discussed that philosophy and vain deceit yes, I, last week, mga kapatid. And also traditions of men. Traditions of men. And you know how we have been slayed by traditions. Amen. Even Christians have been slayed by tradition up to now. They're already saved, but they still could not let go of many of those traditions. Amen. And also the rudiments of the world. We talk about that. We discuss these are the elementary things, mga kapatid. Ano yung philosophy? We discuss the compound word of that word philosophy from the word phileo and sophia. And the word sophia means wisdom. And phileo is love. That means the love for wisdom. But this is not the wisdom of God that these philosophies been talking about. But this is the wisdom of this world. Amen! Because of the wisdom of this world, mga kapatid, the world knew not. Amen! And they think that the wisdom of God is what? Is foolishness. Because of the wisdom of this world. And traditions. And by the way, philosophy may sound good, but philosophy is a vain deceit. It is an empty deceit. Empty, vain, nothing. Walang kwenta, walang laman. Akala mo, is scholarly. Akala mo, smart. Pero empty. Amen. Pero madala ka dahil magaling po mag-explain. But traditions of men. Amen. They were, they were once lies. Pero na-accepted ng society. It fought hold on society. At tumagal. At ano nangyari? Naging tradition. Na pasak kay lolo, napasa sa anak, napasa sa apo, napasa sa apo ng apo, napasa, pasa, pasa. Anong tawag yun? That's a genealogy. That's a long-held, long-held amen, tradition. Yan po yung problema. And rudiments of the world. I-deploy ang jablo ang rudiments of the world. Ibabalik ka niya sa mga basic necessities. Ibabalik ka niya sa mga carnal things. Ibabalik ka niya sa mga earthly things. Supposedly, I mean, we are to set our affection on things above and not things on this earth. Bibigyan ka niya, i-overwhelm ka niya ng mga, mga earthly needs. I-overwhelm ka niya ng mga earthly na mga, mga ano po, pleasures at lahat. So that doon na makapokus ang ating mga isipan at sa mga physical na, sa mga carnal na, na mga bagay. At hindi na po doon sa mga langit na mga bagay, mga kapatid. Kaya po, When we discussed Colossians chapter number 2 last week, 
mga kapatid. Amen. I-contain ka niya sa mga touch not, handle not. Kaya sabi niya, we are already dead to the rudiments of the world. Our position supposedly, we are already dead to the rudiment of the world. And Paul said, why us though living in the world? Bakit ang mga Kristiyano dapat dead to the rudiments of the world? Supposedly, dapat hindi na ganito ang affection natin. But still, why still, mga kapatid, living in the world? Yes, sabi niya, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is at the right hand of the Father. And set your affection on things above, not on things on this earth. Ano nangyari po, mga kapatid? Ganun. Napaka, napakaliwanag na talagang na-enslave po tayo sa rudiments of the world. Accomplishment sa mundong ito, bigas, yung mga, yung mga, mga necessity, quote-unquote, sa mundong ito, and we will exchange it, mga kapatid, and we will give up some spiritual important things, we'll give up the, the church, the Bible, service to God, para lang makakain, para lang maka... Hello! Dahil, remember, we open some things for, for their God is their belly, their glory is their shame. Who mind earthly things? Who mind earthly things? Yun ang nangyayari sa atin. That's what we've been talking about. We have been programmed, mga kapatid, na ang church ay hindi importante ang Bible ay hindi importante. Dapat hindi yan priority. We have been programmed of that. What's important is education, trabaho, magandang trabaho, malaking sahod. Ganon. I'm not saying lahat yun pangit at ba- ano po mga kapatid. But what I'm saying is the devil will trick you na yun ang pinaka-importante at yun ang priority sa buhay at hindi na ang Panginoon. Yun po ang problema po mga kapatid. Na-divert po tayo sa ano dapat nating pinupokus. Mga kapatid. We start to worship our own belly. We start to worship our own physical, earthly need rather than setting our affection on things above. Yun na naging result. At ito pong rudiments of the world na ito ay nagiging successful sa mga buhay ng mga Kristiyano, sa mga believers ko no. And that is real. That's what happened to the Colossians. Amen. That's what happened to the Colossians po mga kabatid. And I'm working with a, in the book of Colossians right now. And I'm working with, with that and trying to study everything with that Colossian believers mga kabatid. What happened? They have a good doctrine, but they have been, amen, they have been victimized by philosophy, by traditions, by rudiments of the world. But even entertaining extra biblical revelation is the fourth satanic issue. Alam na alam nila yung mystery. Sinasabi ni Apostle Paul, tinuturuan po sila mga kamatid. By, but they are still victimized by these satanic issues that they have been engaged with, they have been deceived with, and they could move on mga kamatid because of this. And try to counterfeit the message of God, to attack the message of God. And the message of God, mga kapatid, will be now secondary or will be covered with the glories, quote-unquote, of the satanic issues na binigay niya sa atin. Yun po ang naging problema. Hindi mo lubos maisip na ang napaka-doctrinadong Colossians, believer. You know, isa sa mga pinakamagandang books after the The book of Ephesians sa pagdating sa mystery truth is the book of Colossians. Pero if you study the book of Colossians within, they have been struggling with these issues. And many of them, Paul gave a very strict warning po mga kapatid. Napaka, look at chapter number 2. Itong warning niya sa Colossians chapter number 2 has been apat po na warning po mga kapatid na makikita mo dyan. Number 1, ang warning niya mga kapatid sa verse number 4. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Amen. Any man will beguile you with enticing words. Warning number two, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ, po mga kapatid. And number, number three, verse 16, let no man therefore judge you in me or in drink, or in respect of holiday, or of new moon, or of 
Sabbath day. These are rudiments. These are rudiments of the world. Amen. And finally, mga kabatid, Paul warned them against extra biblical revelation that the, the devil, amen, brought into the body of Christ, brought into our local churches through this religious leader, through these false prophets, false teachers, mga kabatid. Ano sabi? So verse number ano po, 18, let no man beguile you of your reward in voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding in those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up in their fleshly mind. Did you see that? I'm working with it. Amen. I just finished chapter number one. Woo. I, I, I have never, I have never in my life as a saved, as a Bible teacher by God's grace, as a messenger of God, as a Bible student, I've never seen such, ano po mga kapatid, when I look at closely the book of Colossians, now I understand really the struggle of it. Mga kapatid. And the reality of the attack of the devil against the truth of God, against the message of God. So this is the counterfeit message that the devil will employ so that the believers, mga kapatid, will not believe what they're supposed to believe will not know and learn what they're supposed to know. Kaya ito po, successful. Look around your churches. Look to every family. And tell me if these are not sitting, if these are not influential, and if this is not, ano po mga kapatid, uh, working sa kanila. We have, we have. If we look at even in our own homes, we have some, some own traditions. Amen. We have our own philosophy or concept of what, who God is or the ministry is. But we never thought that yung philosophy na nakuha natin, humanistic philosophy. Amen. Worldly philosophy na not after Christ. We have some traditions that we keep. Wala naman sa Bible. Amen. Even in our churches. And rudiments of the world. Look at every family. Ano ang affection nila? Saan nakaset ang kanilang heart? Saan ang pursuit nila? And you, mas shock ka pa nga kapatid. Akala mo, preach tayo ng preach. Pero ito pala, nagkikrip in. Na ang rudiments of the world pala, ang nagkukontrol nila. Earthly minded pala. Who mind earthly things. At kaya, kaya ang dali lang mag-absent sa church. Ang dali ma-board pagdating sa mga Bible studying ganito. Walang interest sa Bible. They find it now. Wala naman, hindi naman to profitable. Kung nagtrabaho lang ako, may bigas na, lahat ng, lahat, ganun bang konsepto. I'm not saying you don't work. We should work. Amen. But we should not put our affection in them. These are things are secondary. They're far more greater na gusto ng Panginoon na mapansin po natin. The rest will follow if we have a right perspective in these things. But ang, ang nangyari po mga kabatid, we worship money, we worship our belly, we worship our own need. Doon tayo na-trap, mga kabatid. And ito pong extra biblical revelation, mapapansin po natin na meron din mga mysticism ang ating mga pamilya, ang ating mga ano po, mga loved ones, nag-entertain, kahit kristyano na, meron pa rin mga mysticism na, na entertain. We may not aware of it, but constant hearing, constant exposure, amen, exposing these things, will you realize, oh, Meron pala akong ganito. But we need to repent. We need to acknowledge the truth para po maka-let go or maka-break free po tayo sa mga nagkukulong po sa atin. Kaya effective tayo dahil po ang jablo ay nagiging successful siya in this area po mga kapatid. Amen. And that, 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 should, that should remind us today mga kapatid. I hope that would help us because these, these are they work to make it so that Christian end up living not according to the truth given us today. What is the truth? Do you know the truth that is given for you today? Amen. That is the truth that God revealed to the Apostle Paul, mga kabatid. At sino si Paul ngayon? He's your Apostle po, mga kabatid. But sino si Paul present today? He's rejected. Amen. Hindi po siya pinapansin. Wala po, hindi po binibigyan. Minamagnify yung specific instruction na binigay ng Panginoon sa church. Bakit? Because of these things. Baptist churches, ako, ang daming mga Baptist churches nagdi-despise. When you preach about the teachings of Paul, the Paul in Ephesians, and they'll say, oh, mga hyper-dispensationalists yan. Ah, mga ganito yan. Ah, mga kulto yan. Ah, mga... You see, that's a trick of the devil. 
Ang gusto ng jablo, mamuhay ka sa isang instruction na hindi na effect eh, hindi na applied ngayon. Dadalhin ka sa ibang programa. Ano ba ang kulto? Ano ba ang mga kulto? Yung mga kulto po mga kabatid ay namumu paniwala nila ay nasa Bible din. Pero ang paniwala ng mga kulto is yung mga katotohanan sa Bible na hindi na applicable ngayon sa lumang tipan or maybe sa future. Hello? May verse naman lahat ng mga kulto. May verse man sila lahat. Lahat ng kanilang posisyon. Si Kimbuloy, meron ngang verse eh. Totoo naman na may kingdom eh. Nasa Bible naman yan eh. Pero ang problema, hindi yun. Ang kingdom, hindi pa ngayon. Future pa yun. At ang kingdom na yun, kay Jesus Christ yun. Hindi niya kingdom yun. At hindi din siya ang hari. At hindi din siya Davao. You see, how the devil will try. Hindi din siya Davao ang promised land. Paano naging Davao? You see, paano napaniwala ang mga tao doon? Dahil totoo po ito yung issues na ito. Eh. Once na magiging stronghold na yun sa mind mo, ang devil is manipulating already what you should believe and what you should not believe. That's why ang truth po mga kapatid, preach tayo na preach na preach na mga kapatid. Hangga, hindi natin alam kung mga kapatid, kung paano, anong, anong weapon na ating gagamitin, wala. Kasi ito totoo, hindi po natin to i-underestimate. Amen. Madami po mga tao is slaves po dito. And ito mga extra-biblical revelations. Hindi mo maisip, hindi mo maisip, paano mapaniwala nila na itaas mo ang iyong ang itlog, iwagayway para ipapalain ka ng Panginoon. Tapos pag mag-preach ka ng Bible, ay, religious naman, ganun na naman. Oh, nakita nyo ba na wala yung sanity ba nila? Remember, yung mga nagtaas ng itlog, kumuha silang itlog dito sa kanilang sa kanilang bulsa or dala sa kanilang bag, tatlong itlog, itaas daw sa sa eri at iwagayway yung itlog po na yun. At yung mga nagwawagayway na yun, yun yung mga so-called educated, yun yung mga doctors, yung mga, mga nakakomplish ng, ng mga, mga higher education in this world. Hello? Paano sila na paniwala because bewitching of the devil is real the beguiling of the devil is real the deceit of the devil is real amen tapos baliktarin mo ang payong kung magulan daw baliktarin mo ang payong sabi nila bakit kasi daw para hindi masayang yung pagpapala ng pagnon sige baliktarin mo pag-uwi sa bahay ni lagnat amen na paranoid inubo inubo Nagka-sore throat. Amen. Na paranoid. Ah, baka COVID na to. Hindi. Naambunan ka lang. Kasi binaliktad mo yung payong. Amen. Supposedly yung payong para hindi ka maulanan. Nagkaroon katuloy ng ano, trangkaso. Hindi yung COVID. Trangkaso yun. <laughs> Now I'm just being sarcastic, brother. Sorry to do that. But what, what, what I'm, I'm pointing is, I'm trying, I'm trying to nail the truth there. Yeah. How in the world people will believe these lies? Where there is the simplicity in the Bible, all you have to do is Christ is the Lord. Christ is the only salvation. Amen. Amen. That He saved you. He died for you. And don't say, oh, but they will believe such kind of lies, such kind of foolishness, mga kapatid. Mire mo mapaniwala ka na sa sabihi ng iyong religious leader na ako ang may ari sa mundo. At sabihin kong, stop! Stop! Woo! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Tuwang-tuwa naman ang mga tao. And I'm, I tell you, mga mayayaman yun, mga educated yun, hello, mga nagkaroon ng higher education yun, mga professionals yun, but, but believe na believe sila, ako ang anak ng Diyos. Uh, ipapastop ko ang Lindol, stop! Papastop ko ang COVID, stop! Woo! Cheer naman sila, proud na proud. Paano sila napaniwala sa ganun? Dahil lang jablo, totoo, na nagkukurap sa mind. Nag-hypnotize mga kapatid. It's a matter of hypnotism. No control ang iyong mind. Na manipulate ang iyong mind. That's why ito pong, kap- ito pong pag-uusapan natin. The only way to liberate you is to, amen, give chance to the, for the truth to be heard. Listen, learn the truth po, po mga kapatid. That's what we're pointing out. Ang dami, dami mga kalokohan na nagpag-usap daw ang angel sa kanya. At sinabi ko to last week, di ba? Sinabi ko to last week na uma- umakyat doon siya sa bundok daw. 
Ilang araw siyang hindi kumakain. Hello. Hindi siya ilang araw siyang hindi kumakain. Dapat pagkatapos ng iyang kanyang fasting and ano prayer, pagdating doon, tapos siya lang mag-isa, nandoon tapos manarinig niya ang boses ng Panginoon. Tinawag daw siya. Amen. Apollo, Apollo, Apollo. Ikaw tawag daw siya. Tapos may sinabi ang Panginoon, ngayon ikaw na ang appointed son of God. O tapos bababa na sa bundok, magsasabi na kinausap ako ng Panginoon. And later on, tapos may maniniwala. Kasi of course, salita ng jablo eh. May maniniwala, susunod sa kanya at mabibiwitch. Ang ganito na, ah, tapos marami At yung mayaman, madumadami ang pera, lumalaki ang reliyon. Amen. It's just about money making. It's not in, in, even about the truth. It's about the, the blinding of the devil. And we need to understand, this is our fight now. This is the kind of warfare that God wants us to be oriented. We're so busy picking on some fight. We need to preach the truth. What we're doing right now, we're trying to counter-attack these lies, mga kawadid. Tapos, later on, ganun na. So, ano nangyayari? Mga, ito mga experience na ito, yung mga, mga anong tawag nito, mga encounter with God, encounter with angels. Pansinin mo, may common things. Nag, hindi sila kumakain, ilang araw, sila lang mag-isa. Bakit sila lang mag-isa? Kaya walang makatestify nun. Walang witness. Walang witness, mga kapatid. Sa lahat ng mga miracles, sa lahat ng mga encounters sa Bible, may witness po yung lahat. God situate na may witness. May witnesses. Pero sila lang mag-isa. Sino nagpapatunay that they're telling the truth? Pagdating sa mga law, kailangan natin ng witness. Pagdating sa mga accusation, kailangan natin ng witness. Pero pagdating sa mga spiritual matters, tatanggapin ka agad natin without thinking. At totoo yun. Bakit ano nangyayari? Bakit parang nawala yung mga, mga sanity ng mind natin? Dahil may bewitching. You understand? Ang unang gumagawa ng bewitching ay hindi witches. Pero ang real na witches, yung mga false prophet na yun, na bewitch, inignotize ka. You know, there's this, what we call a guild. We, we just learned this last year. Napa, napa-research naman ako ng kaunti. Meron ditong mga group ng mga witchcraft, mga kapatid. Ay, mga witch. Who practice witchcraft po, mga kapatid. Di, even dito sa Pilipinas. At ang mga ginagawa po nila, mga kapatid, is nagbibiwitch po sila. Nagtutugtog sila ng mga message to hypnotize. At saka meron po silang mga chants na pinapaulit-ulit na sinasabi. Unreal talaga na ang ang tao na once na ano na mawala siya sa kanyang sa kanyang mind, magkaroon siya ng ano bang tawag nila yung trance, uh, pro, pro, astral projection. Sometimes makita nila sarili nila na lumabas sa kanilang sarili. These are ito na yung mga Dracula, vampire na yun, wala yun. Hindi yun nakakatakot. Ang mga ito nakatakot nang naglalaro ng mga spirits na ito. Amen! Yung mga nagkagano, nagpa-practice ng mga, mga astra, yung mga dun kaputuloy na takot sa mga ghost-ghost na yun, sa mga multo-multo na yun. Ang realidad po mga kapatid, yung mga bewitching. Na, alam mo yung mga mudos dati, ano ba, may, ano ba, yung, ano ba yung ano na yun? Sa... Uh, could you help me out dito sa Zoom? Ano ba yung, uh, ano ba yung grupo na yon sa ano, mga kapatid na, na parang ma-hypnotize ka, makabigay ka ng pera, makapag ano bang tawag ng grupo na yon na mga tao na yon? Hindi ko alam kung may nakikinig pa ba sa akin dito. Uh, ano ba yung gang na yon na grupo dito sa Pilipinas? Ha? Na magulat ka na lang ay budol yon, budol-budol. Thank you, Brother Peter. Budol-budol na talagang ma, mapabigay ka sa iyong bank account, mapabigay ka sa... Talagang, ang ginagamit po nila, ganun po mga kapatid. And we're not joking. Ito, yan po ang kalaban po natin. Espiritu. Espiritu sa jablo. Espiritu ng mga, mga unclean spirits, mga kapatid. They are, their work right now is not to possess you. Yung mga demonic possession. Hindi po ganun po mga kapatid. Iba na. Ang sa kanila is wala take control, ginagawa nila. Meron pong kaming, meron po kaming nakausap na talagang witch na tumagtutugtog sila, nag, nag-enchantment sila. Tapos nakapasok pa sa amin. And buti na lang, by God's grace, ay na, na-discern. 
Amen. At naki-worship din. Pero nag-forward one time, nag-forward sa invitation. Akala namin na-bless mga kapatid. Akala namin na-bless doon sa na sina, sumama pa kay Buddy Randy. Ay, hindi ko alam kung kasama ni Buddy Randy. So may invitation, camp meeting yun. So nag-forward pa doon. So nag-pray din. Nag-pray doon. Nag-pray. So tapos biglang nag-Indian squat. Nag-Indian squat mga kapatid. At biglang nag-chat-chant, nag-ganyan, nag-yoga, pambira ng Diyos. Uh, mapapansin namin yung spirit doon sa camp meeting, tarang ba't ang, ang very dry? Baka walang nasisave. Bakit walang? Meron palang something. Amen. Be careful. Because these are, these are mga unknown, real, un, re, but these are real things. These are mga bandage po mga kapatid na even to generation to generation. Amen. These are the kind of spirit but we need to counter them with the armor of God. And this armor of God is don't be mystical in your thinking na you, ah, I will have a sword and then I'll fight back. No, no, no. The sword there is the word. And how will you fight? How will you use the word? The sword of the spirit is the word of God. Preach it! Amen! Preach it! That's the way you fight it. You are to gird up your loins. Amen! With truth. It's not about the, it's not about the belt, but it's about the truth. It's about the peace. Amen! It's about the faith. Gagamit lang siya ng shield of faith para maintindihan po natin. Makarelate po tayo, but it's about faith, it's about truth, it's about peace, it's about righteousness. Yun po yung armor na binibigay po sa atin. Let's not be mystical about that. But what are these to counter against the wiles of the devil? Mga kapatid. So, hindi kumain. Ano nangyari? Ilang araw, inausap ng Panginoon. So, ano pong punto nun? na ano lang yun, nag-hallucinate, delusional, naging delusional ang tao, hallucinate. Pero wala yun sa sobriety, wala yun sa sound mind. At pansinin mo po yun lahat. Daming mga religious leaders ng mga cults, mga kapatid, na ganun po ang mga encounter. Mga kapatid, you want to be free? Read this book. Believe this book. And know the specific truth na binibigay ng Panginoon sa iyo. And once you learn it, preach it. But be careful. The devil is so busy attacking that truth right now. The devil is so busy obscuring that truth right now. That's what I'm pointing. Just be careful, mga kapatid. Because these things are real. Okay? These things are real. So if we are not aware, ay talaga... Maano po tayo, mabudul-budul po tayo mga kapatid. And uh, talaga, yung dami, dami we, we can tell so many stories. No? Kahit, kahit nga sa Surigao, sa Surigao ba yun? I think si brother ano, yung mga PBMA. I mean, talagang, talagang yung mga, if you know the tad-tad, talagang mayroon silang chance na pag ganunin mo sila ng ano, sabi nila, ng bala, hindi sila matatablan. Barilin mo sila ng isa, dalawa, pero may encounter sila one time sa mga military ay hindi talaga kaya ng power nila kasi machine gun eh. Talagang masaker ang nangyayari. Pero they have somehow extra, ano po mga kapatid, hindi, huwag mo i-underestimate yun. Hindi yun superstitious because meron po silang ano, ng ganun. Pero yung mga multo-multo, yung mga ano, yun, wala, wala yun. Mga bampera, bampira na yun, yung mga aswang-aswang na yun. Ay ba yun? Amen. Mga nagpapakita ang kaluluwa, no? no wa, wa. Hindi ganun ang jablo. Real ang jablo. Hindi ganun ang kanyang pamamaraan. Amen. Let's not be ano po mga kapatid. Let's not be uh let's not be uh be naive sa mga bagay po na yun. Okay? So, let's go to some warning ni Apostle Paul. Let's go to some warnings po mga kapatid. That because this is real, okay, let us go to some warnings na binibigay po ng ni Apostle Paul sa atin. Okay, ang mangyayari po ito, basta itong apat na satanic issues na ito, 
ang goal nito i-replace kung ano yung dapat mong pinaniwalaan, anong dapat mong matutunan. At i-replace mga kapatid na ang authority ng salita ng Diyos is not anymore your authority. Amen. The written word of God will no longer be your final absolute authority in your Christian life. But instead mga kapatid, ang mabaling ka sa mga bagay na mga uh, ano po sa mga personal experience, sa mga nakita na wala namang witness, hindi naman totoo, wala namang mga apparitions na yon, ang dami-dami, dami nilang mga ano po mga puna. Tumutulo yung dugo, ay lumuluha ng dugo at lahat, ang daming mga gimmick na ngayon na ang dami, ang daming gimmick. Kakalungkot. Kakalungkot. I'm thank, thank God I am free. Thank God na palaya po ako ng salita ng Diyos sa mga bagay na yun. Napaka, I have so many experience of that. I'm a Cebuanon. You know, Cebu is napaka, napaka devoto po namin doon. And I have, I, I grew up with that. And I've seen already enough mga kapatid. Okay, don't be fooled. Amen. Get that Bible. Amen. Because the devil has this his attack against the message. But amen. But truth is truth. Amen. Right? If the devil will be successfully blinding every man not to believe the truth, but truth will not change. Truth is absolute. Amen. The devil could not could not uh, fight against the truth. Wala siya magagawa. He could not make it untruth. The devil could not make it untruth. Are you listening? He could not. But the devil could do is just to deprive anybody from knowing the truth. That's what, what he can do. Amen. He will work, mga kapatid, so that they will not know the truth. So, let's heed to these warnings. Let's go to these warnings of Paul that these are reality, that may mga false teachers na baon-baon, dala-dala. May mga false prophets na dala-dala ang mga bagay na ito. Dala-dala itong mga sinasabi natin. Join me as I go to Acts chapter number 20. Acts chapter number 20, verse 28. Acts 20, Paul's warning against false doctrines and false teachers. Acts 20, verse 28 to 32. Let me read, mga kapatid, verse 28. Take heed, therefore, this is the parting words of the Apostle Paul to the saints of, of, of Ephesus, mga kapatid, in Acts chapter number 20, and he gathered all the elders, and he talked to the elders, doon po ng church. And sabi niya, Take heed therefore unto yourselves, and to all the flock, over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. So they are told to take heed first unto themselves. That was his warning. Mag-ingat ka for yourselves. Bakit? Mamaya, maintindihan niyo. And what else, mga kapatid? And to all the flock. Take care of the flock. Take heed of yourself. Take care of the flock. Protect the flock. The point is, protect the flock even from yourself. Amen. From anybody, including yourself. And ano sabi? Over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseer. Let's understand that our churches is not ours. Amen. It's God. These are God. Amen. And to feed the church of God. That's the duty. Amen. Thank God for your pastor who faithfully feed. Amen. Thank God for those ministers of God, those evangelists, those preachers, mga kabatid, who faithfully feed the church of God. We need feeding. Amen. Para hindi tayo lupaypay, mga kapatid. Hindi tayo weak pagdating po sa labanan. Pagdating po sa mga deception. Matibay po tayo, mga kapatid. We need feeding. Because this is God's church which He had purchased with His own blood. You know, it costs His own blood. It costs God's own blood. We better take care of it. We better take care of, our, of every soul. Why? Because it costs God's own blood. Amen. To save us. To purchase us. And Paul said, verse 29, For I know this. Paul was not ignorant. For I know this. He know it very well. Amen. He sensed it. Paul is not a prophet who are trying to prophesy, but he know it. For I know this. That look at this. That after my departing, do you see how easy, how quick, the devil will take advantage. Do you, do you realize that? How quick? Amen. How quick he will exploit and take advantage of after my departing. 
just as soon as he depart, mga kapatid, grievous wolves enter in among you. Amen. You know, wolves in the Bible has a negative connotation. Amen. There are wolves in sheep's clothing, mga kapatid. They are grievous. Do you understand why they're called grievous wolves? Because after they attack, they will leave grief. Amen. They will leave grief. And they will grievously, they're apathetic. They will, they will cause the wound that is so grievous, mga kapatid. The effect will be so grievous, mga kapatid. Amen. Grievous wounds. Enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Oh, it's so sad to think of many churches that it could be after the pastor died or after the pastor go on ahead with his ministry in another calling of the Lord. It's so sad to see some churches, some families had been destroyed by a wrong doctrine. You're listening? Amen. I, I have seen that. I've, I, I've been to many churches. We've seen that. It's very sad. They have been slaved. They have been... They have been... There's these grievous wolves enter in, not sparing the flock. Walang kinikilala yun. They are unfeeling in their methods. They have no emotions. Amen. Doesn't care whether batayan, baian, amen, weekyan, doesn't care. Walang kinikilala. Not sparing the flock. You know why he said, take heed unto yourself? Because it's another warning that Paul said, also of your own selves. Also of your own selves. Amen. Men shall arise or shall men arise within the flock. May mga from attack from the outside or merong within. Kung hindi kayo ma-destroy outside, you will be destroyed within. Also your own self shall men arise speaking perverse things. You see, within the church, merong mga tao that will speak Perverse. Perverse. Amen. These are corrupted. These are, ano po mga kapatid, uh, distorted words and truths. They will speak perverse. Anong, anong result? To draw away disciples after them. Amen. They will speak perverse things. To draw away disciples after them. You see, as a man of God, as a pastor, of those church, sabi ni Paul, therefore, watch. Watch. Brethren, can I say this? Watch. Let's watch. Sometimes, itong, yung mga, itong mga pinapangaral natin ngayon, you, doon sila nag-iingat sa atin. Amen. They're, they're afraid of the Bible. Yan po yung problema. Bakit? Of course, ang jablo, magdi-defend din po yun. But watch for these people. Amen. And remember, remember, sabi ni Paul, that by the space of three years, I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Wow. Night and day with tears. You see, when Paul foresee these things, when Paul foresee these things, or I know, Wala, inevitable to eh. Itong attack na ito ng Jablo is inevitable. Whether we like it or not, he will attack. Amen. Pero, ang what we hope for na lang is kung maging successful ba ang attack o hindi. But whether we like it or not, he will attack. Amen. He will take advantage kung may puwang. Pero, when Paul foreknew that, sabi niya, for I know this, when he knew that, that after three years is going to depart because he will not be there forever. So if efficient believer, you know he will depart. He will go somewhere else where kung saan siya tatawagin po ng Panginoon or ililid po ng Panginoon. But he foresee that. That one day, he's going to leave this flock. He's going to leave this people. And he knew it very well. 
that once we will leave these people, amen, then grievous wolves will enter in. Or if, or if not, mga kabatid, there will be men shall arise within themselves, will speak perverse things, to draw away disciples with them, mga kabatid. When he knew that, amen. He warned for three years. There, for three years. Sabi niya, I ceased not to warn everyone night and day. Amen. With tears. Pastors, it's not enough to preach only on Sunday. Ministers of God, evangelists, it's not enough to preach only on Wednesday, on Sunday. Amen. We have to preach every day, every day. Shout that. Amen. And, 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 and sound the trumpet, mga kapatid. And warn, give the warning to our people that these are, there are wolves, mga kapatid. There are false teachers, mga kapatid. Keep on pounding that pulpit. Amen. Raise up your voice like a trumpet. Amen. That could be loud enough to be heard. That can be loud enough to reach in their heart and in their mind. And we need to do that as messengers of God. That is our job. That is our calling, mga kapatid. We need to realize that. Amen, amen. God help That's us. That's the Apostle Paul. That was first century. What about our time today? What about today? Which is more dangerous? Paul said, when he prophesied, Paul said, he said, mga kapatid, amen, in the last days, perilous time shall come. Oh, we are, I believe it with all of my heart, we are living in a perilous time. So this time that we are living in is more perilous than the time where Paul gave the warning. Amen. The time where Paul gave the warning to this efficient believer. And pastor that are listening right now, evangelists, missionaries, servant of God, preacher, how often do we give the warning? If we will, you will just meet religiously Sunday, sometimes 30 minutes bang yung preaching, sometimes sa county lang ang preaching, Diyan ako naiinis eh, pag, pag bibigyan nila ang pastor or ang, ang preacher ng 30 minutes lang to preach. They thought, do you think na ganun lang ang ano? Tapos the world will will 24-7 non-stop na nag-reprogram sa iyong mind na itinuturo. Pag bukas po lang ng Facebook, may makakita ka ng mga ideology. Pag pakinig po pala ng bukas mo ng TV, may mga ideology na kagad. Pag punta mo sa school, may mga ideology na naman. Pag punta mo sa work, may mga ideology. Kahit saan ka pupunta. The devil did not stop putting you, implanting you some, sometime. Tapos pagdating sa mga spiritual things, 30 minutes lang. Tapos pag one hour na si pastor, tulugan nyo pa. Naboboard ka na. Gusto mo nang gumawa something. You could not, para ka bang langaw na pula ang puwet mga kapatid na hindi ma-remain ma ka. Ganang galaw ka ng galaw. Uneasy ka na. Nako, si, si evangelist nag one, one hour and a half na. Nako, nag 145 hours na. Nako, nag 3 hours na. Nako! Dami na nagre-reklamo. Dami na. Can you imagine? Paano pa kaya si Apostle Paul? Have you seen this? Do you believe this verse over here? Na nakikita po natin? Warning in, in, in the space for three years. I cease not to warn everyone night and day. And he is so passionate with it. It with tears. With tears. Because he knew how serious it is. He knew what threat it is, mga kapatid. He knew it. Church. Ang wolves, hindi mo pwedeng ganun. Magsimba naman kayo. Amen. You have to pound, pound, brother. That pulpit. I don't know if you're tired, but I'm taking this ministry seriously by God's grace. I have to wake up in the morning and shout. Amen. Amen. Prayer breakfast. Na, wala na. Alas sais. Sa buong adulam. Hindi ko alam kung abot ba sa kinapasturbin. Abot ba doon sa labas, sa doon sa may river, o abot ba sa kabilang bundok? Kasi di, nasa bundok kami, may kabilang bundok. Mga kapatid, kawawa nga yung newborn ko dito. Minsan, magulat na lang kasi sumisigaw ang kanyang tatay. Ah, I don't care. I don't mind if I do it every morning. I don't mind. I don't mind if I, I do it every workman's treasure. There's supposed to be Bible study, but I'm a preacher. I will preach. And preach and preach. Why? I would like, just like the Apostle Paul, amen, that I have not shunned 
but declare unto them the whole counsel of God. He said that in that chapter, that he declared the whole counsel of God. Could you imagine in the space of three years, walang tigil, night and day, warning. He knew that. Pastors, this is the pastor's heart, and you know this. If you're listening, if you're part of a church, love your pastor. Love those people who labor in the truth. Amen. Who, who love you enough, care you enough. Mga kapatid, don't misunderstand it when they preach hard. Amen. As long as it's in the Bible, take it. Take it. Because the heart of the pastor, po, mga kapatid, knew, understand very well. If I will not do this, you will be victimized by these wolves. You will be destroyed one day that lies ahead. And the, if the pastor knew that very well, mga kapatid, he will take that seriously. And in the time that God has given him, he will not stop preaching. He will not stop preaching and warn us from these things. Because hindi to madali po mga kapatid. Do you think it's easy? Do you think ano po, napaka, napaka ano po ito mga oh. As long as the Lord liveth, amen. As long as the Lord will use us. Let's, let's preach, brethren. Preach the word. Preach the word. That song, the opening song that we have. Preach the word. Amen. Preach the cross. Preach redemption to the lost and dying world. Amen. Lift your voice. Amen. Unashamed of the gospel of his name. Until all have heard. Amen. Kahit magsawa na mga tao. Just keep preaching. Kahit sabi nila, baliw na yan, pastor. Keep preaching. Just keep preaching. That's my encouragement this morning. Let's keep preaching. That's the warning of our Apostle Paul. If you understand, amen, just to encourage our dear pastors watching, mga kapatid, please, please take seriously this apostasy. You could not belittle apostasy. Take this seriously. Another warning of Paul in Romans chapter number 16. And not another warning of Paul in Romans 16 verse 17. While the devil, amen, Ay wala po siyang ano po, wala po siyang kinikilala, not sparing the flock. He will do everything. He will attack, amen, by any means. Tayo din dapat would also take that challenge. As preachers, we would also take that challenge to counter yung persistency, yung determination ng jablo po mga kapatid against our ladies, against our families, against our children, against anybody in the church mga kapatid, against our fathers. Let us also take that calling seriously. Being a preacher, a pastor, an evangelist, mga kapatid, it's not about our comfort. Amen. But it's about the truth that we need to, to preach. Amen. Romans 16, verse 17 to 18, Paul gave a very, amen, stern warning in Romans 16, 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses Contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them, avoid them, mark them, and avoid them. Any man that causes division and amen and offenses, and how do you know that it causes offenses and division? Contrary, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. Any of those that are contrary to the teachings of Paul, amen, mark that man. Amen. Pag grabe pa yan, avoid that man. Don't give them an inch. Don't give them a place to bring in their agenda. Because there, ang pinapuntir yan yan is the message for your edification. The message for the salvation of others. Yun pong pinapuntir yan po yan. The message, mga kapatid. Amen. For you to live by. Yun po ang atakihin yan. Pag once na matakin yan, wala na. Ma-deprive ka sa mga truth na ito. Ano mangyayari si Christian? Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth. Ano, ma-deprive ka sa katotohan. How could you live as a Christian life? As a Christian, mga kapatid. Kung ganun po ang mangyayari sa ito. In verse 18 it says, For they that are such, Amen, serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. But their own belly. But their own belly. And by good words. 
and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Nako, ito po ang problema. May mga tao that will arise or come in. They are good in speech. Parang makabagbag damdamin minsan magsalita. Napaka-formal, napaka-smooth talkers. Hindi rough, hindi rude, hindi kagaya nitong minister nito, very rude. Sorry for my rudeness, sometimes my sarcasm. Mga kapatid. Amen. But I'm not trying to to impress anybody. I, I, I would like the Lord to use me the way He wants to use me. Amen. There are people by good works and fair speeches. Ooh, hindi mo lang makabasag pinggan. Para kang duduyanin. But, amen. But that was a while. A while. W-I-L-E. That's a while of the devil. Why? To what? Deceive the hearts of the simple. What's the goal of the devil? To deceive. What is his SOP? To deceive. What is his modus operandi? To deceive. Hindi, hindi para iposes ka. Hindi na po, hindi ganun. But he deceive. To deceive. Pag once na madeceive ka, malayo ka na sa dapat mo. So na successfully, na-attack niya yung mensahe. Amen. Na na alis niya yung mensahe. At naniniwala ka sa ibang mensahe. Second Corinthians chapter number 11. Another warning of the Apostle Paul. Second Corinthians 11. In verse number, verses 3 to 4. The Bible says, but I fear. Paul said, lest by any means. You see that? That's why, naintindihan nyo, bakit ganun ka-passionate si Paul, nag-warn mga kapatid. Amen. Lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So our enemy will use a beguiling, amen, trick. And he will use his subtlety. Take note, understand, by any means, kahit sa anong pamamaraan, he will get you through his subtlety sa kanyang magaling na pagdiskarte, mga kapatid. So your minds, what's his goal? So your minds be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that come and preach, preach at another Jesus, whom ye have not preached, or he, if he receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Bear with that. Amen. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Amen. Pag meron na mga another Christ, another Jesus, madaming another Jesus ngayon, nag-walk, mga anti-Christ, nag-walk in this life. Amen. At mayroon pong another spirit. Amen. Sa mga, sa mga simbahan ngayon na nagkikrep in, pansin ninyo po at another gospel. Next week, yun po ang ating pag-usapan. Yung attack ng message is specifically on the gospel of the grace of God. We will point that out next week, mga kapatid, Lord willing, which we have not accepted, ye might well bear with it. May another gospel, may another spirit, and another Jesus. Amen. For he that cometh, pupunta po yun. They're everywhere. At hindi po yun sikrito sa inyo. Hindi po lingid sa ating kaalaman. In Galatians chapter number 1, verse verse number 6 to 9, mga kapatid, let me, while meron pa tayong 7 minutes, Galatians chapter number 1, verse 6 to 9, I will detail, I will give you the detail of this sa next week, ito pong verses 6 to 9, okay? The Bible says, mga kapatid, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. What marvel Paul? Saan siya na, namangha? Saan siya nagula? Mga kapatid, kung gaano sila kadali, how soon ye are removed? Hindi siya nagulat sa mga Paul's preachers. 
Hindi siya nagulat doon sa mga ano po mga kapatid? Sa mga mga false prophets na pumapasok, alam niya yon, Anticipated niya po yon, Pero nagulat po siya sa mga Galatian believers of how soon they were removed from Him that called you unto the grace of Christ, unto another gospel. Mga kapatid, nakakagulat din minsan ang mga churches. Ha? Akala mo, kasama mo pa ngayon. Marami, I know of many ministers, mga kapatid, nakapag-aral lang ng isang araw, isang linggo, nag-change na ng doctrine. As in, totally doctrine. Tapos inabandon nila yung mga truth na alam nila. Tapos wala na sila ngayon. Kakagulat yun. Oh, ganun, ganun. Pastor yun ah. Ano yun ah? Di ba? Kung nag-aaral yun, bold na bold pa nga nag-preach yun, ganun na yung doktrina niya? Ay, huwag kayong magulat. Ang nakakagulat doon, kung gaano kabilis, ganun din ang kanan. Na, move, na remove sila from the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Which is not another, but there be some will trouble you. This is his warning. Amen. People will come and knock on your doors or get in in your church and, and they will trouble you. Because these, these are real attacks. And would pervert the gospel. We'll, we'll see if the gospel that your church is preaching is the gospel of the grace of God or one of these another gospel or perverted gospel. We'll see. And Lord willing, mga kapatid, this would be a help sa atin. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. Sabi ni Paul, you bear with those people. Kayo, let him be a curse. Let him be a curse. But by another gospel, let him be a curse. And as we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach another gospel unto you, then ye which have received, let him be a curse. Let him be a curse. So you see, you could still curse. But you don't curse those people who are, amen, who are, who are right with God. Amen. Please don't. But those who are bringing another gospel, let him be a curse. Remove that. You have no time to listen to that. Amen. Chapter number 3, verse number 1. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth. So be careful of that bewitching. The devil will dare to bewitch you. Chapter number 5, verse number 7 to 10. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven, leaveneth the whole lamb. And I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. Amen. Sino man nagtutrouble niyan? One day they will, they will bear that judgment. First Timothy. First Timothy pa nga kapatid. First Timothy chapter number one. Hindi ko, na, hindi ko na ibigay sa inyo lahat ng warnings, napakadaming warnings ng, ni Apostle Paul. 1 Timothy chapter number 1, verse 19. The Bible says in verse 19 po mga kapatid, Holding faith and a good conscience, which some have put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. Remember that? Para tayong natoast to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. Para tayong inal analogy ay isang ship nasa in the middle of the sea that with the boisterous winds. At ang isang believer ay and, and, until one day, nalulunod po siya, shipwreck. We're like that. 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 to 3. Ano sabi? Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Nakita niyo po, please underline that word. Speaketh expressly. ba sabi nila, ang Holy Spirit daw is a still small voice. The Spirit is a still small, small voice. But in this verse, it's not a still small voice. What? He speaketh expressly. Do you know what we're doing? Why we shout? Amen! When we preach, why we lift up our voice, we raise up our voice. Not because we're angry, we're speaking expressly. We would like to sound like a trumpet. We are speaking expressly. Just think, mga kapatid, how the Holy Spirit yearns, mga kapatid, for you to listen to Him. And He's speaking expressly. He that hath an ear, let Him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He's speaking expressly. Amen. Expressly. Not a still small voice right now. Ano yung sinasabi niya? 
that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Wow. Oh, pagdating sa mga apostasy, you have to speak it expressly. Because the Spirit speak it expressly. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit, enticing spirits, seducing spirits, and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from it which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Last verse na lang sa ngayon pa, mga kapatid. Let's continue the rest ng mga warning sa next week. Chapter number 6 and verse number 20. Chapter number 6, verse 20. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain bubblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Some, amen, have erred the faith concerning. Avoiding, amen, vain bubblings and oppositions. Take note, may mga oppositions. At isa sa opposition sa truth, isa sa opposition sa message that we ought to believe right now. The Bible calls it science, but falsely so-called. Bakit falsely called? Science falsely so-called. Bakit? Because how could that be science if it's against the Bible? The word science means knowledge. No, knowledge. It's a body of knowledge. But how could be a body of knowledge when it's against the Bible? That's why he call it falsely so-called. They're not real. But real science, mga kapatid, will always, amen, agree with the Bible. Will always complement with the Bible. But this science, the opposition of science, falsely so-called. The opposition of philosophy. The opposition of tradition. The opposition of the rudiments of the world. The opposition of these, mga kapatid, of these extra-biblical revelations. Take it. Careful. Because they are real. Because that's the way the devil will attack. And praise God. Amen. Our Apostle Paul, the Apostle to the Gentiles, mga kapatid, amen, warned you night and day with tears. Amen. Sabi ni Paul, even weeping. So, let, let, me, let me express that, mga kapatid. Philippians, naalala ko lang. Philippians chapter number... Three, he said this to the to those people sa mga Philippians, mga kapatid, kung paano siya kaseryoso po dito. Sabi niya dito, for many, amen, for many walk of whom I have told you often, now I tell you even weeping, I'm telling you even weeping, kanina with tears, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross. Amen. Enemies of the cross whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is their shame, who mind earthly things. And pastors, messengers of God, ministers, amen. Let's get serious in warning our people because the threat in attack the message, in attacking the message is so real. Let's not last, amen. But let's use night and day. As often as we could warn, the better, amen. As often as we warn and we preach and we teach, that's the better, mga kapatid, sa atin. Pero kung papitik-pitik lang tayo, ilang araw lang, that would not be enough. Because the, the, the opposition of the truth against the truth ay 24-7, walang humpay. Kahit saan pumupunta mga brethren natin, nandun po yung opposition ng truth. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brethren. Thank you for listening. I hope po ay may natutunan po tayo this morning. At salamat po sa Panginoon sa kanyang biyaya po sa lahat po sa atin. And Brother Peter, uh, God bless us all. Okay na po tayo, Brother Peter. Thank you po sa lahat ng kasama natin ngayon. Even dito sa Zoom at saka sa Facebook. Amen. Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praise and glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises of God